undergraduate school. This is my second time here. Mm -hmm. uh, while the introduction was being made, I was uh, asking myself, who was she talking about? Mm -hmm. uh, could it be me or mm -hmm. some other person? But uh, I'm glad to be here. Now, there is no other better way to begin this presentation, I think, other than asking you, throwing a question out to you, let me sample you. What do we think scriptures are? What is scripture? Bible verses. Excellent. Any sort of sacred text. Sacred text. Sacred. Bible. Yes, yes. Wow. That's the crown of it all. True. True. I want all of you to say truth. 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 Now these, everything you have said has to do with general conceptions. That is what we have come to inherit as the meaning of scriptures. However, for purposes of clarification, I need to let you know my assumptions. You cannot hold scriptures in your hand like this. You cannot. Is that taken? How many of us have cultures? You have culture. If you have culture, can I see enough? How many of you have held your cultures in your hand before? You held it. You can show me this is your culture. Have you? Have you ever thought about scriptures that way? So with that, I am just going to read and give some time for exchange. <clears throat> Introduction, definitions, and clarifications. In this presentation, I use scriptures as bridge in investigating and performing what African diaspora residents and African Americans in the United States mean when they exhume imaginaries of Africa. By the way, the title for today, uh, the title which you have is Unscripted Anxiety, Amnesia and the Complex Duplications of Black Identity. However, what I left out of the topic was the very first term, of course, the framework I'm working with, which is scripture. So that the topic, the full topic should be scriptures, <coughs> column, then you have a unscripted anxiety, amnesia, and uh, the complex duplications of black uh, identity. And for purposes of clarification, Peter Och, the edger Bronfman, professor of modern Judaic studies at the University of Virginia, writes an interesting article in the Huffington Post entitled, What are the <coughs> Scriptures? Fordering Wilfred Campbell Smith's seminar work with a subtitle. Arch states that he believes that, quote, we should abandon two unhelpful approaches <coughs> to scripture, end quote. The first of such approaches involves defining the word scripture to suit only our faith tradition's idea of sacred, or what is thought to be sacred. Now, this is disastrous. Archie's second approach is even more subtly homicidal, with the implication that, quote, one crystal clear way that is supposed to apply to every possible example <coughs> would be located. That is across all religious traditions. In analysis, we just simply have to understand that the world we know now <coughs> is not a three individual paradise. Ours is a seven billion people planet with diverse faith traditions, few of which <coughs> possess any written texts. And unfortunately, these few with texts are the root causes of any serious global religious or political <coughs> trepidation. By way of illustrating the attack which would befall human life and society 
in the event that, quote, one crystal clear way becomes impossible to locate. Let us assume that Nigeria's deadly extremist terror sect, the like somebody said here, that when you talk about scripture, you tend to those who believe in those scripture think that is the truth. Uh, and that is why, from that, what they call the truth, fanaticism arises. And that is where we have in terms of, for example, the Boko Haram people that we have given an example in Nigeria. They believe that what they are doing is in accordance with the scripture, with the, with the Islamic scripture, and therefore they have a divine injunction to go out and kill people. And that is where I want to ask the question, to what extent is the scripture a truth? Or let me put it this way. Is it an objective truth rather than a subjective truth? based on what individuals who hold to tenaciously to a particular truth might, in another situation and in another circumstance, not believe in the truth of that scripture. So that is why I want to say, what is the difference between objectivity of the scripture as the truth and the subjectivity of it as the truth? That is one part, if you permit me to give the second aspect. Is concerning even the slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade that you mentioned. Sometimes in bringing the slaves into the Western world, particularly to the Americas and particularly the United States, it was the belief of the Christians at that time that they were actually fulfilling the truth of the Christian scripture. In other words, you bring these slaves in order to be able to save their soul. So it doesn't matter what punishment they received in terms of being slaves. What was more paramount was the idea of saving their soul, which you could only do by bringing them as slaves. Again, it raises the problem of the contradiction of whatever you want to say between subjective truth of a scripture and a scripture being objective. So in the two cases, one of religious violence, and secondly, of slavery, which to all extent is anti the Christian belief of your loving your neighbor. Because I can't see how I can fulfill the Christian message of loving my neighbor and at the same time subjecting that my neighbor to go through this slavery uh, 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 dynamics, if you want to. But that is justified within scripture. In fact, it will quote the scriptures for you to justify that position. So I don't know if I, I will get what I'm trying to allude to in yes. any difference. Thank you so much. Uh, please, I'm going to clap for him. <laughs> he, he has the language to express what I'm saying. You know. Now, the core of what he has said is violence, right? Violence. Truth is used to cause violence. Now, whether it is Boko Haram or the transatlantic uh, slave traders, one thing is common. Truth. And it doesn't stop there. The enactment of this truth reproduces what? Fatality. Bombings. Chains. But it doesn't start there. It is an epistemic world. A world of a world formed and carved around texts, just book. I'm gonna give one example. In the African worldview. The Africans believe that, typically, I mean, African traditional religions, God is so big God, and God cannot be boxed. God is everywhere. God is mighty. So when white men came to Africa with a book called the Bible, and they said, this is where God is. God is not anywhere. First, that seemed 
to the local people very strange and stupid. How could you put mighty God, big awesome God, in this? <laughs> However, on second thought, because Africans were open to the idea that if God is everywhere, what stops God from being in a boat, right? However, they did not fully understand the white man's ideology, text ideology, which means that God is in this book, and God is closed in this book. God is nowhere else. What does that mean? It means that the book privileges those who can read it, those who can interpret it. Is that correct? I mean, when you, how many, do we have Christians here? Not all of you are pastors. For example, I'm going to give you that example. Maybe that would help you to see what I'm saying. You get to the church, certain people are in the position of interpreting what the Bible says. Not everyone. Not everyone's interpretation will be correct. And not everyone will listen to everyone. No. There are some people who would say it and no one will question it. Because they are in that position of giving what it means. That was why I said my interest in scriptures or religious studies is not in terms of hermeneutics or lexical meanings or what is it. No. My interest is what is being done with the meaning. Back to Boko Haram in Nigeria. Boko Haram says Western education is bad. Western civilization is evil. We are going to make all you Nigerians Muslims, whether you like it or not. Western civilization is bad, but Boko Haram is on YouTube. <laughs> Boko Haram is on YouTube. Using YouTube. Yeah. 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 Boko Haram is weaving AK-47. Mm -hmm. AK-47 is not Islamic. <laughs> it's not. So the idea, you look at the act of the wizard of Oz. It is not in the meaning, behind the meaning is what you should look at. There's something masked with meaning. Something is being done with the meaning. So to the uh, Atlantic slave trade, and I'm going to dwell uh, around that on the King James Bible. You know, many of us Christians who believe if not King James, it is not correct. I don't know if you were raised up that way. I was almost raised up that way too, right? If you, some people believe when they read the King James, that is the true original language of God. Hey, they don't say it is the true translation. They say it is the true word of God. King James is a human being. It wasn't, remember. Here, I'm not, we, we're, we're not here to cast doubt on whether it is divine or not. We just have to understand what has been done by a human face that we do not see. So that's the violence. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with what it means. No. It is what has been done with the meaning. Because the meaning means what we want it to mean. That is where scriptures are really, really... Boko Haram is not going around Nigeria slapping people with Quran. No. No. It's not. Boko Haram is going around in Nigeria with bombs and guns and not the Quran. Yes. No, I have a question there. Yes, sir. Uh, it seems that I believe you said, can you hold this, can you hold the scriptures and so on? Isn't actually that the major problem that uh, your argument is based on is written things? Because scripture means written things. And uh, unlike other civilizations, you can deal with yourself and your imaginary or your religious things without reference to something that is written. Because when once you claim that something is written, you have the chance then to make out of it something fundamentalistic and something extreme and uh, declare it as the only way. Which I think that uh, the, the argument would be 
more grounded if you could say, okay, basically any reference to a text written, not uh, to a written text or to scriptures, had a entails fundamentalistic moments. And this is actually where the danger comes from. The result was precisely that these scriptures always uh, how to advocate mono monotheistic uh, attitudes, which is not the case in uh, uh, African uh, indigenous religions, for instance. Okay. If you take it from that way, the, actually the means provided by the fact that it's written, uh, declared written, actually was not resolved, revealed by word of mouth, and then it is the, uh, the human beings who have manipulated to present it as written, therefore freezing the possible meaning at the end 